So I conducted a poll among some of my friends asking, what is a narwhal? Um, I did this on Twitter so I would get some feedback. Um, some of the answers were, I don't know, have no idea. Um, do you mean Naruto the cartoon? And no, I do not mean Naruto the cartoon, I mean a narwhal. Well, it lives exclusively in the Arctic Ocean, the world's shallowest and smallest ocean. Uh, taking up 5.427 million square miles. It has pack ice seasonally. In the summer, the pack ice might be sparse. During the winter, though, it gets pretty dense in pack ice. The surface temperature of the water floats around negative 1.82 degrees Celsius, which is the freezing temperature of water. For an animal to live in the Arctic Ocean, it needs certain adaptations. Uh, thick layer of insulation is one. Insulation is a must if you're going to live in this kind of cold. Um, feathers or blubber is a good example. To have a countercurrent exchange system to conserve the heat loss from surfaces is, is another. Having a large size to reduce the surface area to volume ratio, which prevents heat loss, is something. and then eating high energy food. Um, for marine animals, a streamlined body is advantageous because it takes less energy to move through the water. The narwhal has a few specific adaptations. It does have the insulation layer, which is made of blubber. Um, it does have the countercurrent exchange system to help prevent those surface heat losses. And it eats fish, squid, and crustaceans, which are very high energy food sources. And its large size does reduce the surface area to volume ratio, which, conser which helps conserve heat. Pack ice plays a very large role in the narwhal's life. They live around pack ice year-round, so that means during the winter they can be throughout the Arctic Ocean, but during the summer They'll migrate north to where the pack ice is more dense. Why do they live around the pack ice? Because their food sources are there. Many of the fish that they eat live around the pack ice. But they can also use the pack ice to their advantage if they're being hunted by something like a killer whale. This might provide an escape for them, or it might camouflage them so the killer whale may not see them. But just like every mammal, dolphin, a whale, these things have to breathe. When they dive down, they can dive down for 20 minutes before they need to come up and take a breath. But there's a problem with the pack ice. The pack ice sometimes closes in on top of them. And if they're not able to surface in, a, in an area free of pack ice, they will drown. One of the most striking features of the narwhal is its horn. Or it's really a tooth. Um, the narwhal's in the in the toothed whale family, and its scientific name, the Monodon monoceros, actually means one tooth, one horn. So this this tusk, this tooth they have, is the only tooth they have, and it protrudes from their upper left jaw. In males, it may grow up to three meters long in a counterclockwise spiral. Uh, the tooth is rare in females, though. Uh, what are the teeth for? Many don't really know exactly what they're for, but there are some ideas out there. Is it for defense against an attack by a killer whale? Uh, we think no, because why do the females not have it? Poking holes through the ice? No, the pack ice is far too dense, and another thing about the horn is it's packed with nerve endings. Um, fighting for a mate? Not necessarily fighting, there is some ritual where they, two males might touch horns while competing for a mate, but it's not really fighting. 
Um, and then communication. This is a question because we don't understand what the nerve endings that are packed in the horn are used exactly for. So they could play a role in communication. And this horn has given rise to the to some myths. Um, the unicorn myth in particular. Um, when the Vikings would go and harvest these narwhals, they would take the horn and sell it to people around the world, not necessarily telling them the full truth of what kind of animal it came from. So this gave rise to the popular thought that maybe this horn went on the top of a horse and would be a unicorn. Um, but no, it came from a narwhal. And the, the name narwhal is an old Norse word broken down into two port parts. Nar meaning corpse and wall meaning whale. And it's called a corpse whale because of its coloration. As it gets older it gets white. And the corpse part of it comes from if you look at a drowned sailor still floating in the ocean it looks white, just like the narwhal does when it's at surface. There are a couple of threats to this species. They're not endangered yet, but there are some threats. Overhunting can pose a potential danger to them if uh, bag limits are not set properly and people overharvest just for the horns. But the major threat to their life is the climate change. Pack ice being such an important part of the narwhal's life, as the climate is changing and warming up, this pack ice is melting. Well, if all the pack ice is melted, the narwhal will have nowhere to, to go. It, it can't find food, it has no shelter from predators, and it is not in its natural environment. If you're interested in learning more about narwhals, you can check out some good videos at www.arkive.org or check out National Geographic's website for some more cool stuff. Narwhals, narwhals, swimming in the ocean, causing a commotion, cause they are so awesome. Narwhals, narwhals, swimming in the ocean, pretty big and pretty wide, it beat a polar bear in a fire. Like an underwater unicorn, they've got a kick out facial harm, they're the Jedi of the sea. Hey, stop kafoo, no way to eat. Narwhals, they are narwhals, narwhals. Hey, if you're interested in more info about the narwhals. Stop that. Do that again. Go. Uh, okay. If you're interested in more. No, no, no. Give it some time and then go. Okay. If you're interested in more info about narwhals, you can go out and check... <laughs> Stupid cat, man.